us. <laughs> ah. Amen. So last week, are we ready to film? Is that yes or? Yes. Yeah. Yep, thank you. All rolling. All rolling. Okay. Thank you, man. <laughs> so last week, we looked at Mary, did you know? And we, uh, from scripture, we realised that actually, yes, she did know. And it's a quite comical look at times, wasn't it? And, uh, uh, but it, it, I think it kind of brought the truth of, of the, um, the situation. But I was thinking about poor old Joseph. I mean, he has a, you know, a very important role to play, it is our Joseph. But he doesn't really a, a, appear much in scripture, really. You can see a little bit, but in Luke's version, not a great deal. But Matthew, oh, he's a good guy. He records a little bit more about our friend Joe. Now, I was wondering about our friend Joe Joseph, because imagine if he had Twitter. Imagine his tweets or his Facebook status. Mary dropped a bombshell. Boom. Hashtag confused.com. I mean, he would be, wouldn't he? Mary's told him this. I'm pregnant. Remember, it was that <laughs> EastEnders cliffhanger moment, where it's like, oh, no. And here, Matthew records some things about Joseph. I think you and me can apply to our lives. Because, yes, indeed, she dropped a bombshell. And he was very much confused.com. He was in a dilemma. But what do you and me do when we are faced with a dilemma? Do we tell our friends about it? Do we spout it on Twitter, I can't believe what's just happened. You know, hashtag cheesed off. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, what, how you, do you share it perhaps over a pint with your mates or maybe a, a cup of tea? Do you go and visit a friend? Do you stop and think about it? Do you live in denial and go, I'm not thinking about that. I can't deal with that. I'm just going <coughs> to mosey on and plod on. Or are you somebody who just really needs to talk about things? And talk to God about things, or all the above. What we see here in Matthew 1 from verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and we looked at that last week, what that meant. Remember now Mary was about, you know, in, in that culture, in the age range from 12 to 14. She's a little girl. And she tells, she's got to tell her parents she's pregnant. Joseph. Out of fear, thinking, well, Joseph, is he going to go and do one? You know, hey, children, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> or is he going to man up? Is he going to step up and say, Mary, I know what love is. And I want you to know it. It's a quote song. Well, this is what happened. It says, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Remember that. This is an immaculate conception. This is of the Holy Spirit. This is not your average pregnancy. This is an extraordinary, miraculous, massive thing happening to little Mary, the poor Joseph. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, in other words, he was righteous. He was kind of a good bloke. And he had a beard. And he probably wore carpenter's clothes because he was a carpenter. And he's, he probably was a good guy. But Joseph says here that he was just and not wanting to make a public, uh, not wanting to make her a public example, a public example, <coughs> was minded to put her away secretly. And this doesn't mean he was going to kill her, roll her in a carpet and stick her down the dump. No, he didn't mean that. What he meant was to put her away secretly was to let her down gently, maybe have a conversation and, okay, I need to see the parents, I need to say it wasn't me. <laughs> Who is it? Perhaps she's thinking, oh, it was Simeon at the synagogue. He's being funny to me. Uh, well, perhaps it was him. Perhaps he's suddenly suspicious of every bloke in the village because, hang on, who's been with my girl? You've got to understand the realness, the rawness of, of his emotion, of his world has just been shattered. She 
who's only 12 to 14. He doesn't want her, her to have a public disgrace. And a whole big crisis. And a whole big drama. And a whole big deal. He had in mind to, on the quiet, let's just put some distance between one another. So he had this dilemma. You see, in a way, Joseph wanted to do the right thing, yeah? I mean, wouldn't you? Let's do the right thing. Let's, let's compromise. Let's talk about it. We're not careful. We can sometimes do the right thing, but it's not actually the God thing. We really need to hear God, especially in times of trial, especially where there's dilemma. Know what happens. He had good intentions. Oh yeah, okay, I'll, I will quietly just say, look, it's not going to work out, you're pregnant, I don't know who the father is. <laughs> Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, I love that. John, before you do, think. <laughs> Not just me, what about you? Do we sometimes rush in sometimes? <laughs> we need to think. That's what I like about Joseph. He was really thought about it. He thought things through. He's a good example of somebody who doesn't know what to do, but he's thinking things through. He had good intentions, but what happens? As he was thinking things through, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. <laughs> you see, we sung this morning about, it's your face I see. You know, as we seek God's face, okay, we might not have angels appear to us, or maybe he can, he can, but it's in that time when we seek God's face, we're putting him first, as we're thinking things through, we're looking heavenward. And I get this picture of Joseph thinking things through and almost like drifting into a sleep in his dilemma, and then God bringing his message to him to put things in perspective. Because he was just about to make a good intention of something he thought was right, but God then brings a divine intervention. You have to discern between a good intention and a divine intervention. Often we do things because they're good intentions, but we don't wait for what God says. We don't wait for what his spirit wants to say to you and me. We run off and do it instead of waiting because God, maybe God's plan would have been better. Maybe God's plan would have been more massive. Maybe God's plan would have brought more people to Jesus. Instead of sometimes doing the right thing, step back and say, God, what's your thing? I want to know your thing. What's your will in this? And it, sometimes God's answer is not necessarily the easiest Sometimes if we knew what was coming, we wouldn't do it. That's why God doesn't show us the whole picture. It's step by step with Jesus. Step by step with Jesus. So Joseph is in that place, just about to make a good intention. What does God do? He brings a divine intervention. The angel of the Lord comes. Imagine his tweet then. Boom! You never guess what I just saw. Hashtag angelic miracle of breakthrough intervention. What did the angel say? Joseph, son of David. In other words, I know who you are. I know where you've come from. I know all about your family, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Boom. There it is. Hashtag, I'm okay. <laughs> Phew. Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife. And he's thinking... Okay, this is divine direction. I was going to do the right thing and just quietly, just, you know. Angel say, no, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife. Don't be afraid. In other words, Joseph, 
we can gather from this that Joseph had a new courage. Because God's just about to do a new thing. He's just about to birth the king of kings. And Joseph has a part to play in this. Even though Joseph didn't go the way Joseph thought it was going to be. Man, when he fell in love. When he fall in love, it will bring challenges. When he fall in love, it will bring blessings. When you fall in love, let me tell you, it will be tested. But you've got to choose to keep loving. And I love Joseph here. He stayed with Mary. Even though it could be seen as public disgrace. It could be seen as a terrible sin. It could be seen as somebody who, I don't know, perhaps they would stone them. Perhaps they would do something awful to them. But no. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And the angel said, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Underline that, highlight that, circle that. Perhaps not in the church Bibles, but perhaps when you get home. Of the Holy Spirit. You need to know what is of the Holy Spirit. So we don't miss what the Holy Spirit wants to do. When the Holy Spirit, when the angels proclaimed, look, don't be afraid, this is why. We want to know the why before the what sometimes. And it doesn't always work that way. Joseph had to trust what God was saying here. He had his breakthrough. Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. We've got to know that what we're about to do, what God is saying, what are you saying? Is it of the Holy Spirit or is it just a good intention? I'd rather have divine intervention over a good intention. A good intention, well, it's okay, but I don't want second best. Who wants second best? Who wants God's plan for our lives? God's plan, God's purposes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Good up. Don't fire me in preaching the Bible. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. You've got to recognize the seed of the Holy Spirit in other people's lives. We've got to release other people into ministry. We've got to recognize the call. We've got to recognize, you know, where people have a, a vision from God. We've got to discern, is, is this of the Holy Spirit? And then release them in that. And we, you and me are midwives, right? I know blokes is a bit weird, but we are spiritual. Huh? We do have blokes, midwives. Equality and diversity. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but it, it's like you do have male midwives. Okay, whatever. Mid husbands. What are you going to call them then? Midwives. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> well, we are spiritual midwives, men and women, called to birth, see people blessed, and see people released into their neighborhoods and nations and next door recognizing what is conceived is of the Holy Spirit and the angel says oh by the way and she will bring forth a son and you yes he's listening you will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins he goes to Twitter hashtag amazed that's it just absolutely bowled over the girl in love is only going to bring forth a Messiah. The one who's going to save people from their sins. But you, Joseph. Come here. Joseph, you're going to call him. You. You're going to call him Jesus. You. You have that task, Joseph. You're going to, you're going to name the king of kings. Is it just me who's excited? Imagine you get to name Jesus. Okay, he's a stepdad. He's God's, God's a father in right? But it's, it's, he's going to name Jesus. I mean, what a part to play. Hashtag super excited. Can't tell anybody. Hashtag off to Bethlehem we go. name of Jesus. And then Matthew quotes this. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, it's quoting Isaiah 7, 
Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Imagine Joseph thinking about Isaiah 7 and all of that thinking, oh my God, he's using me. I get to name him the King of Kings. I get to name him Jesus. Who is going to be God with us? Who is going to save people from their sins? Who is going to be present? His presence among his people. The ones he created is coming down to. Get every step as he grew up was a step towards the cross. From the crib to the cross. Not only coming to his creation, but being crucified by his creation, for his creation, so he could redeem his creation. And what happened? 24, Joseph woke up. Then being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Hashtag, well pleased, well pleased. Good man, Joe. He woke up and he had to step up. What did the Bible say? He did what God told him. He did what the angel said to do. In other words, that's it. What if he didn't seek God? What if he didn't think these things through? What if he didn't seek God's face? What if there wasn't an angel, a divine in intervention? Of course it happened. Because scripture was fulfilled that the virgin will bring forth a child. But as Joseph was aroused from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife. I love that. In other words, Mary. Oh, I love you. I'm sorry for being silly. I'm doing a typical blow. Please forgive me. You are my wife. Yeah? That kind of analogy. In other words, don't matter what you've done, where you've been, at home, doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, Jesus still loves you. You think you can't come to church because of all the stuff you've done? Let me tell you, the door is open at Sandy Hill. The door is open. God knew Joseph's history. God knew Mary's history. He knows yours. It's only you who are preventing yourself from coming to Jesus. Open your heart this Christmas, and that's for some of you. Joseph did what God said, and he took to himself his wife. But he didn't know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. In other words, he respected her purity. Lastly, the last six words, and he called his name Jesus. Come on, Joe. It was all fulfilled. Jesus was born. She brought forth the firstborn son, and Joseph, his walk on path, drum roll. And we shall call him Jesus. And he did his part. Joseph, well done. What could have been a disgraceful thing? God turns around to a full of grace thing. Because that's what God does for you. And that's what God does for me. And that's what God does for you as well. He is full of grace. So, the next time. You're in a dilemma. Think things through. Don't rely on good intentions. Don't rely on pleasing anybody. Please your king. Please your king. Often things are between you and God. And that's precious. Don't lose that. We learn from Joseph discernment. You had to know what was of the Holy Spirit. We learn direction. We need to know what God is telling us to do. And we learn about deliverance. Joseph had to be delivered from fear, a fear of shame and approach. But as he was delivered, the king of kings was brought forth. Joseph's name, Joseph's name means 
He will give, he will add, he will increase. Yeah. He added to his life faith. Joseph. Joseph, he gives, well, he gave Jesus his name. Jesus. An increase, which from the house of David. What did Isaiah say? And of the increase of his government and rule, there will be no end. So Joseph, <coughs> hashtag, really great Joe, I admire you. We can learn from Joseph today. We can learn from the Christmas story today. But you've got to know the difference between a good intention and a divine intervention. That means looking upwards, staying close to Jesus. Therein endeth the lesson. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you've done it again. You've amazed us with your amazing grace. Today, Lord Jesus, we crown you as king. You are sovereign. We thank you for these stories. We thank you for Job. Thank you for Joseph, Lord. We thank you that he did the right thing in you, that you broke through. And he woke up and stepped up and showed his love and respected purity and did the right thing. <laughs> Help us in our lives to do the right thing, but to know the things that are of the Holy Spirit. That we would not rely on good intentions, though we have the best of intentions at the best of times, but Lord, help us that we might know that the Holy Spirit is in it. That we can help one another bring forth the ministries and, and things that you want to bring to birth in this place, in our community, in this region. God, you are amazing. And we love you. We give our lives to you.